Today I'm going to cover the topic of green screen, the use of green screen and how to eliminate it the best to get the best performance whether you use Zoom or OBS and I'll let you see how they compare uh, to one another. Uh, first of all, when you are running Zoom, it is important that you know that you have the latest version. And to know that you have the latest version, just start the app and then click on your profile picture and go down to help and look at the about zoom when you go to the about zoom you're going to see the version and currently i have version 5.5.1 which i believe i updated only this week if you're not sure if there is a new version just click again on your profile picture right under help there's check for update and if you check for update it actually tells me that i am on the latest version 551 and if there was another one then it would actually tell me and give me the opportunity to upgrade to that Okay, we've started that. Let's start a meeting. And I'm actually going to make sure that I don't use any virtual background so that I can show you how this works. And I'm, I have unchecked the I have green screen. So I want you to see what this looks like. The green screen that I have behind me, uh, let me eliminate the window. The green screen I have behind me, you can see is not the highest quality. It's, uh, it's really cloth, it, it's $10. Uh, I don't like spending more than $10 on some things. And it's not very well illuminated. It's not very stretched. You can still see where the fold lines are. And all I have illuminating it right now is my room lighting, which is LED lighting. It is pointing at me and, and trying to, to illuminate the room as consistently as possible. It is uh, an LED light that's 5000K color temperature. So it's uh, what's called daylight uh, white. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to try and eliminate the green screen behind me, but we are actually not going to tell Zoom that we have a green screen. So I'm going to choose virtual background. This is the camera I'm choosing. It is a good quality camera. I have a Nikon D3500 camera with an adapter, the um, HD60 adapter. So uh, I'm going to go to virtual background. And what I will do here is I'm not checking the I have green screen. So I'm telling Zoom that I have whatever background. And the way Zoom works is it will recognize my head and try and eliminate anything outside of my head and shoulders and so on. So again, I'm not checking the box that says I have green screen. And I'm just going to check this, take this blue. I'm going to consistently use this blue so you will be able to compare. So this is what it looks like when I use virtual background with Zoom without indicating that I have a green screen, even though I do have a green screen. You can see this halo behind me. You can see the artifacts, especially when I move. You see above my ears and so on. It's, it's not great, especially if I'm using a blue background or a non-green background uh, for this image. I'm going to show you what it looks like if I actually just tell Zoom that I have a green screen. If I check this box, look at what happens around my head to the artifacts. They are almost completely gone. You can still see some halo, see around my cheeks here and especially on the left side. Not great, but way better than before. And this is because I have a green screen and I indicated to Zoom that I have green screen. There's one more thing that I can do, one even level up, and that is you see this little green thing. Now, by the way, you're not going to see it if you're a nun. If you have none here, that box disappears. So you have to actually choose the background first and then you get this little box. Click on that box and what it does is it lets you choose the green that you want to eliminate. So Zoom is a little flexible or somewhat flexible in that it's not going to choose the exact green and every green that is one bit away from it is not going to be eliminated. So there is a range there around the green, but you still need to choose a green that's fairly, you know, I can choose this and you can see what happens. It just eliminated the black or I can choose any other color but i'm going to choose kind of the average green so this is kind of down to me to choose what the average green is and then it eliminates this so what you can see now is the elimination of green screen what's called chroma key or ultra key uh, by some uh, uh video editor software editing software uh, this is how i eliminate it once i have indicated to zoom that I am using a green screen, check that box, 
and chose the ideal green screen. Okay, what I'm doing now is I'm using OBS to eliminate the green screen. So I'm taking exactly the same camera that I used with Zoom before. And as you can see, the background is exactly the same background. I didn't change anything. But what I will be doing now is I'm going to take this camera and go to filters. And in filters, I've already set up a chroma key. So it's one of the filters that I added. And this time, all I'm going to do is just enable it. So I'm enabling it. And when I'm enabling it, uh, you can see that uh, I have, uh, it really eliminated the background, but I wanna show you what this looks like. So I can actually choose the color. So there are different colors. There is green, blue, magenta, in custom, and I'll talk about custom in a minute, but I can do more things in eliminating the green screen with OBS. Before I even touch it, th these are the, the values that I used before. I'm going to close, and I want you to see what the quality looks like. I mean, even the little halo, green halo that you saw, which was very little with Zoom when I, when I checked the box for a green screen and chose the right green screen, even that does not exist anymore. But I can go even further. And once I choose the chroma key, I can play with the similarity, with the smoothness, and with the key color spill reduction. And those are really three parameters that improve the quality. So similarity. I chose green, right? And when I chose green, what I did, and, and I can, if I go to custom, uh, you can see that there is actually a specific color. I can choose a color. I can start playing with these colors and say, you know, the green that I have is really more like this, uh, if you remember correctly, if I remember correctly. So I eliminated that. Of course, my picture completely disappeared. So I have to now start playing with how similar do I want to be to that color to eliminate it. So I'm, I'm going to go here. You see that if I go, if I wanna be too similar, then it really does not eliminate anything. If I'm going to be too asimilar, then it will eliminate pretty much everything. So I wanna be right there at the right place. Smoothness is really my, a bit, uh, how smooth do I want that elimination to be? Color spill reduction is, uh, if, if there is a spillover like around my head, how much do I want to eliminate that? And I'm back and you can see the quality of that while I'm using OBS. I want to summarize what you saw today. So your ability to replace the background, and I'm not talking about the philosophy of whether you should have virtual background or not. I'm, I'm assuming that you want to, and therefore you're going to be using possibly, hopefully, green screen. What you see here is a range uh, on, on the left. And in this range, from the bottom, this is the worst performance, and the worst performance is to use Zoom with virtual background, but no green screen whatsoever. The next one is using Zoom, with green screen, just not checking the exact color. So you're going to have a green screen behind you. You're going to check the box in Zoom that says I have uh, a green screen and then you're going, but, but you're not going to choose one. Slightly better than that is if you actually click the box of the color and put the cursor on the average green screen. Higher than that, better performance as you could see and actually can see right now is how I use OBS. OBS chroma key filter on the camera has a better performance. It has more parameters that you can play with to adjust it, to, to do a very fine tuning of how it eliminates the green screen. The best you can have that you can see from this slide on my left is obviously in video production because removing green screen or chroma key or ultra key as it's called, and I'm using Adobe Premiere Pro to edit videos, it takes a lot of processing power, and the best can be done if you let the processor do it kind of at its own time offline as opposed to broadcast. With broadcast, you're limited to what you can do. So the best would be with a software like Premiere Pro or other software, but that's only when you do offline videos. When you do broadcast, you don't have Premiere Pro as an option. And so the best second option would be using OBS and really fine tuning it to get the best green screen. One more thing, I wanted to talk about the types of green screen. Uh, there is the one that you see here in the middle. This is kind of the one that I'm using right now. It's really not a lot more than a bed sheeting 
uh, a bed sheet that, that's green. Uh, try and use an, an ideal green. An ideal green is what would be defined as zero red, zero blue, 255 green. There is this one is a folding one from Elgato. One of the nice things about it is it's, there's no wrinkles. There are other folding ones that are kind of held by the frame. So, you know, they fold and, and you can open them up and they're held by the frame. Uh, you have green and you have blue, which, by the way, is a great time to say you don't have to eliminate green. You can eliminate any other color. So my background, instead of being green, could be blue or any other color. It's just that there's the lowest probability that I'm wearing something that has green in it than any other color. And this is why people uh, gravitate towards using green screen. And finally, there's a paper. And if I had to do it all over again, I would probably choose paper. This is about what you see here is 107 inches wide, 36 foot long. It's a roller of a roll of paper. And this one costs about $50, $55. So it's not that bad. This is if I had to do it again, this is what I would do. One last thing that I want to show you is that there is an app for there is for an iPhone, I believe also for Android phones, that's called Green Screener. This is what it looks like. And what it does is it gives you the ability to see how homogeneous, consistent your green is behind you. And you can see that you can choose green, blue, or red, or any anything else. But in, in my settings here in this app are typically mid. And what you see in this app is the different shades and how different they are across the, uh, the the entire green screen. And you can see that it's not very consistent. If I put it on low, it would look a lot more consistent, but that's because I'm telling the green screener app to be less sensitive to differences in colors. If I put it on high, it's going to be the most sensitive. Obviously, if I could put it in high and get a very consistent image here on green screener, uh, I'm going to get the best performance and you really are going to have very hard time seeing that there is a green screen behind me and that this is a virtual background. The only thing is that the quality of the material, the most important, the quality of the lighting that I'm going to have to give this green screen behind me is going to take a lot of effort, a lot of time and maybe a lot of money with, with a lot of different lights that are set differently and it will change and vary with uh, with the environment. So I'm, I'm typically not going that way. But you saw what the quality is. You can actually see what the quality is right now when I'm using OBS green screen that's kind of, you know, a $10 green screen not best performance, optimized, fine-tuned chroma key as a, a filter in, um, uh, in OBS. And I'm using a, a fairly good camera. I'm using an Nikon D3500 DSLR as my camera. Put all of this together and that's the quality that you see here. I hope this was helpful. If this video was helpful to you, subscribe to my channel and get notified when I release more videos like this. Also, check out my resources for speakers at thediyspeaker.com.